Manchester. Hello to you all from the north. Right, uh, joining us now, hopefully, from uh, San Francisco, should be our old chum, Greg Proops. Good evening, Mr. Radcliffe. How are you, Greg? I'm fine, how are you? Yeah, Hi, I'm Lord. I'm... Hiya! Mm. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, we're well, we're well, we're well. Now, oh, you haven't lost the magic. What? Still, uh... Oh, he wasn't talking to you. Oh, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Mm. Yes. Uh, anyway, now listen, Greg, uh, before you go any further, I've got a, a, a long letter from someone called Kay in Whitchurch in Cardiff, uh, professing a great fandom of yours and expressing uh, sort of the tragic consequences of you being uh, forcibly ejected or uh, forced not to come back. So what's the story? Because Kay and uh, a legion of others are deeply concerned about you. Well, I appreciate that, and I appreciate this chance to clear the air once and for all on your fine radio program, Mark. Right. Uh, there was an altercation in a town called Scunthorpe. I'm going to call it Scunthorpe. And um, that's a young boy was. died uh, as a result of one of my jokes. And, uh, all right. There's an extradition treaty with America in the event that someone does a penis reference that doesn't go down well in the town of Scunthorpe. It's an ancient, ancient law in the books. It shouldn't be there anymore. Right. And uh, I fell afoul of that law. Right. Um, Oh. He didn't die, really. He just didn't feel well right, okay. for a while after it. And um, evidently, the full brunt of the law was brought down on me. Well, you must be delighted, because you hated it here, didn't you? Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Thanks, Mark, for steering it in the direction I wanted it to go. Uh, yeah, and I'm really glad to be back on the radio here, because it's just a form of punishment that I enjoy. <laughs> no, uh, you know, hey, well, I'm back in San Francisco, uh, just listening to your little traffic report there. I understand that there's a happy eater on um, the M1 that actually served food with flavor in it a couple days ago, and they were, of course, cited by the authorities. <laughs> no, it's groovy being back here, man. I eat Mexican food, like, all the time. I weigh, like, 5,000 pounds. Right. Except I've been in Los Angeles a lot, and so it's sort of like being at a party where you kind of know everyone, but they really hate you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Familiar. So how long are you, I mean, is there a chance you could get back over here? I mean, uh, or are you going to, are you sort of stuck there for the foreseeable future? Yeah, there, there is a chance. There's a Chinese circus going over, uh, and I'm going to disguise myself. I'm going to be in the barrel act. Right. Look for me. Uh, I'll be popping out. Um, I'm hoping to sneak back in with them when they tour. David Copperfield has offered to take me over as well as, as part it, of his act. I'd watch that if I was you. Was so what are you doing He's over there? He's going to pull me out of his pants. Nice, nice. Well, he should pull something. Um, anyway, uh, what are you doing over there? Are you doing uh, some uh, gigs and stand-up over there? Are you sort of resurrecting your American career? Well, uh, I think resurrecting is uh, uh, exactly the term I would have used, Mark. Thanks again. Um, yes, you mean that dormant dead thing that I found lying on the doorstep when I got back? Oh, look, what's this black, ugly, dead thing? Oh, it's my American career. Oh, here's a letter from a fan. We don't know who you are here anymore, loser. Uh, no, I'm, I'm on a very popular national TV show uh, called Wheel of Fortune, and um, they show it over here. Yeah, I've been getting in touch with my roots, man. I've been checking my friends. I played in San Francisco. I'm telling you, though, L.A. is so weird. There's not any cool place to it in London. I mean, in England, because London isn't as shallow as L.A. There's just no way to encompass the shallowness. I can't right. describe to you a place where Brad Pitt is considered good. <laughs> okay, then. And so, uh, what are you going to be talking to us about later on? Have you gleaned lots of exciting experiences in your time back there? Nothing. This isn't going to be a Stephen Daly info-packed thing. This is going to be a lot of blathering and a lot of complaining, Mark. I'm sorry to disappoint your listeners, as I so often do. No, that fairly does. That'll do us nicely. All Beautiful. Right. Greg Proops uh, joining us today. I don't know why I shouted your name there. Greg Proops! Greg yeah. Proops! Is it's more American. I, I do have something to tell you next time we talk about some DJs here and the nettiness they pulled. Right, okay. Because you guys could use some nuttiness, I think. I could use some material. Well, Bro I like the yelling the name. It works for me. Greg Proops! Greg Proops! Is Greg, you've been here, live from San Francisco! Greg Proops, ladies and gentlemen! Greg Proops! It's a bit weird around here tonight, because we've got a deputation from management somewhere around the building due sometime, and it always puts people on edge. I don't know why, because they haven't a clue what's going on, and as we know, anyone who's keen to put the word manager after the name is definitely trying to prop up non-existent self-esteem. It's like when you go into a crappy little cake shop, and there are three women behind the counter with name badges on. Madge, Beryl, and Gainer, manageress. Like, who gives a toss who the manageress is? Anyway, um, all managers are deserving of our deepest suspicion, because what actually is the skill that they bring to the job? 
they manage. Well, big deal. Everybody manages outside work anyway. House, car, bills, wiping kids' asses. And what do people actually mean when they say, oh, well, we'll manage. It means we don't know anything about it, but we'll stumble through and hopefully it'll turn out okay-ish, possibly. That's what management is. So uh, take it from me, these people are not to be feared. They're the ones who should be scared of us, because we may or may not know what we're doing, but management haven't a clue what we're doing. On the other hand, management definitely haven't got a clue what they're doing, but we all know they haven't got a clue what they're doing. Uh, people power one, management nil. So stand up to these suits with their Chateaubriand and Claret lunches and reserved parking spaces. We're the ones in control, and for all their bully boy tactics, they can't touch you. Hello? Oh, yeah. I'm gonna get him. Scrawn? What? It's Roger Bannister for you. Bollocks. Greg Proops with us tonight uh, in San Francisco. You still there, Greg? What up, man? Pardon? Right. Yes, I'm here. Right. Now then, uh, I believe there's been some uh, mayoral goings on in uh, San Francisco. There have. We have a mayor's race uh, that's cooking down to the wire. Right. And it's uh, three hot candidates, one who was a speaker of the assembly in California, which is a very big position. He's a rich, expensive, suited lawyer type. Right. Uh, and then we have our, uh, our, our gay candidate, uh, Roberta Actenberg. She's a... Uh, was in Clinton's administration, but mm. don't let that sway you. And uh, she's running for mayor. And then we have our mayor, who was formerly the police chief. So he's really smart, because right. he has to know a lot of numbers, right? Because they wear the numbers on their badges. Right. So last week, two zany morning DJs named Mark and Brian, which is, I think, what you guys should change your names to. Well, you can be Brian. I'm I not... want to be Brian. <laughs> oh, fair, enough. Name. fair enough, then. <laughs> 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 they, they got in the shower, and they got the mayor to get in the shower with them, and it was pictured all over the United States, and it's been really on the TV every night and on the radio every day and in the newspaper every day. Our naked mayor and his old, flabulous, police-like body, right. chock full of donuts and covered in frosting, there he is in the shower, and he is just such a, I don't know, what's the word, kook? Kook. Um, when you're just a nut and you just don't care, bomb just pot. Show. A bomb pot. Bomb yeah. pot is what you want to Completely call it. Completely bonkers. Bonkers, bonkers, bonkers. Twonk. I Twonk is the word. Yeah, Twonk. Uh, so he's <laughs> proved that he has the intellect to lead a city into the 21st century, <laughs> right. I think. So has this improved his chances, do you think? I believe it has because he didn't show his nether regions. And right. I think if anyone saw that, of course they would have been disappointed. See, that was the joke that got me thrown out of the country. <laughs> right, okay. May I complain to you about what I'm up against here in the United States? Please do. 58. 58 channels for free, right. okay, on yeah. your television. Yeah. Consider that when you go home at night. Tonight on The Tonight Show, this is what you're missing here, man. Right. Pamela Anderson and Bjork. Mm. So, I mean, is this uh, this chat show thing that seems to be sort of um, epidemic or uh, endemic or possibly... But I saw one as um, uh, Brian Wilson's daughter. Carney Wilson has got one of her own now as well. Today, Carney's topic is a woman discovers her fiancé lives a secret life. Mm. As Carney's Brian, the, the DJ. Carney's the chunky one, right? Carney is the chunky one, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, well, I'm, I'm just trying to get which one it was. Well, that was you know, that's, Brian had that problem, didn't he? Because someone asked him what he thought of uh, Wilson Phillips, that his daughter was in. And he says, yeah, he says, my daughter Carney's in that. She's the fat one, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, Brian Wilson about his own daughter. But, I mean, it's amazing to me that like, they, they can keep finding topics and people to go on these chat shows. Where do they find them all for? I, I have no idea. There's 30 of them in front of me. I read you the highlights of one. <laughs> Some of them are just like, a man talks about his pet, you know? It's just, it's horrible. Yeah. yeah. There's hope for us yet, Brian. Huh? I'm saying there's hope for us yet, Brian. Oh, you guys, you need to, I think, funny noises in between songs. I just have a few ideas that I think are going to zest the show up. A little more Led Zeppelin rock blocks. Right. I bet you didn't once call it Rocktober while it was happening. No. God, it was an opportunity to miss, wasn't it? Oh, you guys, come on. You got to do a makeover with a loser from one of the funny towns like Stockport or something. <laughs> right. And then take him to a funny gig like at TGI Fridays. And... We are two losers from a funny town called Stockport. But... I know that I'm trying to help. Yeah, yeah okay. Then. Uh, right, Greg Proops from uh, San Francisco. Vince Taylor and his Playboys from 1959 and brand new Cadillac. Mark Radcliffe, missing you already.